Gunter Steiner has officially departed Haas F1 team. And you know what? I think it was about time. This is a very interesting situation because I think a lot of people blamed Gunter Steiner for Haas's performance and how they have just really been nowhere. 2023 was a very disappointing season. So of course, Gunter Steiner is easy to point the finger at. Now, I somewhat agree that I don't think he was the right leader for the team, but I also think it is totally unfair to put all of the blame on him. See, Gunter Steiner walked into a fresh team in 2016, and that is always going to be a massive challenge. You're entering arguably the hardest sport in the world to reach the top of. You're entering during the peak of the Mercedes dominance, and I guess the expectations for Haas weren't set too high, and we did see some decent results and a couple of decent seasons. But Haas really haven't been consistent, they haven't really managed to leave their mark in Formula 1 and I think they did lose a lot of respect as we talked about in a video a couple of weeks ago. Now Haas of course didn't fire Gunter Steiner, it says that he departed, he left on his own. The new team principal of Haas is Ayo Komatsu, somebody who has been with the team since 2016 so I think that that is a big positive. He's been there from the start, he obviously has a relationship with that team, and I also don't think it is realistic or responsible to think that suddenly he's going to walk in and transform this team into this amazing powerhouse. This is something that takes a bit of time, and I don't expect to see immediate results from 2024. I think there's always going to be an adjustment period. Who knows, we might see some improvement, but I think expecting too much is just setting yourself up for failure as a fan. Now, going back to Gunter Steiner and when I felt it was his time to step away, I felt like 2023 was the final nail in the coffin. In some respects, he got his own way. He got the driver lineup that really he wanted. I mean, he, he had Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hülkenberg, two drivers that are fairly experienced, two drivers that, I don't know, provided a a little bit of security as opposed to Mick Schumacher who maybe had Haas a little bit on edge in terms of crashing and the poor results. So I think with Gunter Steiner having his own way in that sense and still not delivering, I think for me, I kind of sat back and thought, okay, well, what else does he need? What other excuses are there? Now, I'm not trying to say everything went his way and that there's absolutely no excuse. Of course, he didn't get every single thing he wanted. But I saw a lot of people on Twitter saying, I don't follow Haas anymore. You got rid of the funniest guy. You got rid of my favorite guy. Look, being funny and swearing doesn't get you anywhere in F1. It's not gonna help you win a championship. I don't know. I think a lot of people used his temper and his short fuse almost like it worked against him and it didn't really help any situation, okay? I'm not saying Gunter Steiner is the problem, okay? I'm not saying he was the main problem. A lot of people put the blame as well on Gene Haas. Maybe not caring enough about the F1 team, maybe not investing enough, maybe not understanding that structure of F1 and what it takes to be one of the best teams or at least a midfield consistent battling unit. But for me, I never truly saw Gunter Steiner as a leader. I don't know. I think that's just my view on it. I, that's just how I saw it. I never saw him as a strong leader. I couldn't see him ever being like a Christian Horner or like a Toto. It's not that he was bad. I just didn't think after a few years that he was the right man for the job. And yes, I know it's all very hilarious when he says he does not f smash my door. Very, very funny, whatever. That doesn't get you more points, okay? Yes, it's very funny to look back on and very funny to make memes about it, but what does it actually mean? I don't know, if you followed Haas because you thought Gunter Steiner was a funny guy, I mean, I don't think you actually care about the team's performance. Simone Resta, who came from Ferrari to Haas, he has also departed. And I thought that was a brilliant appointment. I think that's a guy that's got experience. He knows what he's doing. He's worked with Ferrari. And only after being with Haas for a very short period of time. I mean, Haas are obviously trying to make some changes. And I think this is a positive sign. Something needed to change. You can't keep going with this cycle and just expecting one day, ha, huh, look at us, we're on the podium. That That's just not gonna happen in F1. I think I see it as a plan. You know, 
yes, Gunter Steiner may have resigned or, or left on his own decision, but let's be real for a second. I think they had this lined up, and I think, you know, the respectable thing to do is to say to Gunter Steiner, you know, we're going to give you the opportunity to resign or, or anything like that. That's just how it works. Look, you got to show him some respect. He's been with the team since 2016. He's definitely passionate, okay? He was definitely passionate. And you got to give him that opportunity, I guess, to leave on his own, I guess, accord. Again, Haas, I think, the opinion of Haas has dropped. And I've had a lot of people in the comments say that you're only turning on Haas and you're only getting angry at Haas because you're a Mick Schumacher fan. And look, that's not the case. And look, I think Mick should have had... One more season. Okay, look, now with hindsight, with 2023 being, I guess, a failure for Haas finishing last, I mean, they didn't really have anything to lose, I guess, besides money and the budget cap. That part, I understand, yes. But that wasn't the reason for me turning on Haas. I really felt like Haas never had leadership. I felt like Gunter Steiner was more of a character than a leader, okay? And I know some people are going to say, oh, but that's just because of Drive to Survive. Look, guys, I didn't even finish the last season of Drive to Survive. That's, honestly, I, I didn't even finish it. It's not something that I put a lot of value into in terms of my opinion of Formula One and the direction of the sport or how drivers are or how team principals are. I watch it as, I guess, a bit of entertainment, a bit of behind the scenes, yes, dramatization. I like seeing other things. I like seeing drivers like do random things. I like watching drivers play pickleball or whatever it is that Charles Leclerc plays. I liked seeing Gunter Steiner and Benotto driving around in an old car, like doing a road trip. I like that stuff. That's cool to see behind the scenes stuff. But in terms of how I judge Formula One and how I judge drivers and team principals, I don't base it off Drive to Survive. I base it off the results that happen at the Grand Prix and the performance. I think that's just responsible. Okay, you guys know Haas are probably my second team after Ferrari. And all I can hope for is that this is the beginning of something because things needed to change and I hope that this is the first wheel that is turning. And I think nothing really bad can come from this, okay? I really don't think anything bad can happen. I'm very interested in Komatsu. I think that this is a very interesting appointment and I hope it all goes well for him. I hope Gene Haas also understands that just changing the team principle isn't going to just magically repair the results. Look, Haas still have time. That's a big positive. And from now, we just watch it unfold.